so we'll see from 16th verse onwards today <coughs> so all these uh, different conch shells blown by um, the Pandava side is mentioned here after Krishna, Arjuna and Bhima blew their conch shells uh, Yudhishthira's conch shell was named as Ananta Vijaya Ananta Vijayam Raja Kunti Putro Yudhishthiraha and then Nakula Sahadevascha Subhosha Manipushpakau. So Nakula's conch shell was Subhosha and Sahadeva's was Manipushpaka. Like that, all other Pandavas started blowing their conch shells. The king of Kashi, Shikhandi, Drishtadyumna, Virata, Satyaki, Drupada, uh, the sons of Draupadi and uh, Abhimanyu. All of them blew their conch shells. So in the purport, Prabhupada explains that um, indirectly Sanjaya or tactfully Sanjaya informed King Dhritarashtra that because of his unwise policy of constantly deceiving the sons of Pandu and endeavoring to enthrone his own son on the seat of the kingdom uh, was not very laudable. And as a result, this great calamity is about to happen, this great catastrophe. And practically everyone will be killed in that great battle, uh, right from the grandsire Bhishma down to grandsons like Abhimanyu and others. Um, so the, everything is doomed because of the devious policy adopted by uh, the sons of Dhritarashtra and supported importantly by Dhritarashtra. And now in 19th verse, uh, further explanation of this conscious is mentioned. Saghosho dhartarashtra nam hrudayani vyadarayat. So this ghosha, ghosha means vibration. That vibration, that combined vibration of the conscious it became so uproarious that it started breaking the hearts of the opponents. Especially, uh, Sanjaya is not uh, holding back his words. Dhritarashtra is right before him. He is explaining to Dhritarashtra and he is saying, Saghosho dhatrashtra nam hrudayani vyadarayat. He is saying that all these, your sons, their side, all these hearts were broken or shattered by hearing this uproarious sounds uh, which were touching the sky Nabah Chapradhivim so it is uh, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth and it became so uproarious tumulaha, tumultuous and it was abhyanunadayan it was resounding and it shattered the sun, hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra and um, so Prabhupada writes, um, the hearts of Dhritarashtra, sons of Dhritarashtra were shattered, but it was not mentioned the same about the Pandava side. So this is due to the Pandavas and their confidence in Lord Krishna. Um, one who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. It's a very important point Prabhupada writes in the purport. The sign of taking shelter of the Lord is that one loses the fear. One becomes fearless. Prabhupada was named as Abhay Charan. His uh, birth name was Abhay Charan Day. And after initiation, he was given the name as Abhay Charan Aravinda Das. And uh, after uh, Sanyasa, he was given, of course, before Sanyasa only, he got the name Bhakti Vedanta. In 1939 only, he got the title Bhakti Vedanta from the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So he was named as Abhay Charana Aravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami. So a song also written by Govinda Das, where he says, Bhaja Hure Mana Srinanda Nandana Abhaya charanara vindare. So how to become fearless is by Bhajahure Mana Srinanda Nandana. 
if you take to the worship of sri nanda nandana the dear child the dear most son of nanda maharaj the giver of pleasure to nanda maharaj that son if you worship you become fearless actually there are two kinds of being fearless one is those people who are completely ignorant like they say ignorance is bliss the more ignorant you you are the more happy you are like um, they say one of the ways when i was studying in college uh, the professor of uh, one of the courses called operating systems he was discussing about how to get rid of this deadlocks in the operating system um and then he said there are few methods one is to use you know semaphores or mutexes and like that he kept on discussing and then there was the third method and everybody was curious what is the third method he said it was the rabbit method what was the rabbit method he said rabbit when it sees a danger in front of it he just closes his eyes and pretends there is no danger it is like sticking your head in the sand and pretend that there is no danger so that means just reboot so that is the third method so the fearless one kind of fearless is just pretend as if nothing is happening pretend as if it doesn't belong to me just close your eyes just like the children when something dangerous or something they are seeing on the screen they just close their eyes of course the, that is just a screen and not in reality but um, one class of people they think that just by closing their eyes they can beat fear or they can escape the situation but unfortunately the material nature won't allow them to remain free from fear like that one has to undergo the horrors of the material existence one has to suffer one has to experience this distress according to the karma that we have but the other uh, the same kind of fear the other example we can use is when you go to the mental hospital there also people are fearless but they are fearless because of a disease not because uh, they are free of fear in a sane condition sometime back we had heard the news that somebody they went to the zoo a a mentally unstable person and he had no conception of this tiger you know attacking and uh, dangerous and all that so by mistake he crossed over the fence and he jumped into the tiger's den and there was a huge commotion there the chaotic everyone was shouting and the tiger became alert and it came towards the person who jumped and this mentally unstable person he didn't know what to do he was just um you know within himself and he is just shouting he didn't know what to do and uh, these people started st- uh, throwing stones at the tiger and uh, this tiger actually didn't want to hurt if you see the video he didn't want to hurt the the person who jumped so he was actually it, it seemed like he was actually trying to save the person but the tiger wanted to take him inside to escape this stones getting hit either it wanted to escape from getting injured or he wanted to save the person but the way he pulled the person is by holding the, the only way tiger knows is by holding the neck the tiger with his paws not with his uh, mouth with his paws he was holding the neck of the uh, this person and he was dragging him inside and um, you know just because of the touch of the tiger like that he dead he got he he was dead uh, but the point is that kind of fearlessness is not because he was actually fearless the actual kind of fearless is a person who is in complete sane consciousness and knows the reality of the situation uh, like if you walk along a street in the dead of a night 
and you see a heavy you know person and you can see that he has all ill intentions he is having some weapon in his hand he looks dangerous he might hurt he might take away all your money or he might even kill you and you are you know you are very fearful and suddenly you also see that next to the curb there is this big police car parked and a big police with his weapon holding in his hand is ready will you be fearful any more no you will not be fearful any more because you know that nothing will happen to you the police is there all the time he is watching the proceedings and he can immediately react he can protect you and there is nothing to fear so dependence on the lord works exactly like that it is not that we become strong it is just that we become fearless because of somebody who is stronger than anybody else uh, there was somebody who was sharing this story in a church he was uh, a pastor he was a minister in the church um, quite some time back and he was practicing this uh, dependence on god and one time he was uh, posted in a on his work he was posted to uh, take care of a hospital in the middle of africa jungle and um, he was also getting all the facilities all the arrangements all the supplies necessary for the hospital by going to the nearby city and um, the if when he had to go to the city he had to pass through this dense jungle and it would take two days to pass through the jungle because he had only bicycle at that time to pass through the jungle and he would go in the bicycle go to the city buy all these supplies and uh, withdraw the money uh, basically withdraw the money buy all the supplies and get some money back as well as all these supplies back to the hospital and so he was doing like that so every two weeks he would travel like this and one time when he went to the city he sees two people fighting and uh, one guy is you know injured very seriously and he because of his expertise in treating the patients he actually saves that person and uh, he also preaches him about god consciousness and all that and uh, this person so right next to him is another person who is a, a robber a criminal who sees that this person has money he has supplies he has all these drugs which can be sold and made money and so this person follows this so uh, what happens is this minister this pastor is reciting this story what happened uh, back in us so he comes back to us after a few years spending in africa and he is reciting this story what happened and so he says that on one occasion when he was coming back from the city after procuring all the goods and money back to the hospital so he had to stay overnight in the camp and um, and then some one one event happened during that night and he got to know about that event when he again goes back to the city so when he went back to the city this robber he stopped him and told him you know what we did that day when you were trying to go back to your village in the forest hospital in the forest we actually followed you because we had this evil plan of uh, you know attacking you or even killing you and getting all the money and drugs and all the supplies you had and sell them and make money for us so we were following you and we approached the your camp and we saw that there were about a dozen armed men guarding your camp and we were so scared and we ran away and we didn't know that you were also having this so many security people we thought you were just coming on a bicycle and going just camping in the night and he asked well, we didn't know that and then he was wondering are you kidding i don't have a single armed guy army you know protecting me 
Where will I get these armed people in the middle of the jungle? You must be kidding. And he said, no, 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 not just me. I must, I may be hallucinating, but all the co-friends that I have, he pointed to them and there were four of them. And all of them said, yes, yes, yes. We all saw these dozen armed people protecting your camp. And then he was reciting this story in the church. And then suddenly one of the audience, he stands up and he says, oh, my dear minister, when was this? You know, what, uh, what date was this? And then he recalls exact date when this happened. And then this one of these audience members, he says, you know what? At that time, um, on that day, I specifically remember, I thought of you uh, while I was going to work. Uh, while I was going to church on that morning. And when I came to church, I also called the co-members uh, of the church. And we thought about you that day. You must be in Africa taking severe austerities for doing your work and spreading God consciousness. So we all prayed for you. We were all praying exactly at the same time. It was night time in the Africa. We were thinking about you. And we were praying for you, for your well-being. And then these are all the people who prayed and uh, the pastor, he asked who are all the people who prayed for him. And then uh, he, he started counting how many people were playing. And then all of them stood up and there were exactly a dozen people who stood up and said, we all prayed for you. And uh, so he could correlate. Oh, these are the 12 people who looked like these armed guards, you know, you know, protecting his camp in the night. And the Lord's arrangement was that, you know, they appeared like these armed guards and uh, they were able to quell away the danger that was presenting before him. So it was a true story. And many such incidents happen, not just for a Christian minister, any person who is dependent on God, who is a devotee of the Lord, who has implicit faith in the protection of the Lord, such miracles happen. Uh, many times we hear Lord Narsimha protecting his devotees when in danger. One time a child comes out. This was uh, recited by one of the children in our movement. Um, a child somehow sneaks out of the house. Um, he, he is probably three years old. And uh, suddenly from the main road a big truck would be coming and uh, it was too sudden for the truck to realize that there was this child wandering on the street, sneaking out of the door. And uh, even after sudden applying of the brakes, you know, he cannot control the truck and the truck hits the child and the child is just, you know, thrown away and is, you know, lands at a far distant place. And everybody thinks that that's it. The child is no more. Because the hit was so dangerous and um, immediately the parents come out and rush the child to the hospital and the doctor treats the child and they do the x-ray and everything is done and he comes out and says, you know what, I have not seen a great miracle as this in my life. And what is that? There is not a single scratch on the body or a single injury on the whole uh, body of uh, the patient and there is no danger he is very healthy and fine except that there are small marks of some nails on the shoulders of the child I don't know if the truck hits the you know child why should there be nails nobody had nails while holding the child and there were like you know scratching of nails and, um, you, know, you know, we can obviously deduce that the parents were devotees of Narsimha and uh, Lord Narsimha Dev would have come and protected the child by holding her and taking her away from the danger. So all these kind of things, of course, it is um, sometimes people say it is, these are all sentimental things, emotional things, but... These are the things that the Lord reciprocates with his devotees. 
These are only the prerogatives only of the devotees. Ye yatha maam prapadyante tam sthadhaiva bhajamyaham. To the degree to you, which you surrender, to that degree I will appear in your lives. This is something of um, experiential in nature. It cannot be proved. It cannot be um, explained logically or scientifically. But this is a principle, the most important principle Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita. To the degree to which you surrender, to that degree, or the way you want me to uh, involve in your life, that way I will involve. And the Lord is, Yad bibheti svayam bhayam. Um, when you take shelter of the Lord, through His holy name, Apannaha samsrutim ghoram, Yannama vivasho ghrunan. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, the glory of the holy name. Even if you chant unconsciously, Apannaha samsrutim ghoram, Yannama vivasho ghrunan. Vivasha means, you may not be very conscious. Unconsciously you are chanting the holy name. Um, Tata sadyo vimucheta yad bibheti svayam bhayam. Immediately you are on the liberated platform. Yad bibheti svayam bhayam. Even the fear personified is fearful of the holy name of the Lord. One time Prabhupada would be walking with his disciples. And um, usually, you know, these uh, you know, people who know about Hare Krishna, they are usually mimic or they also chant Hare Krishna, uh, Hare Krishna like that and then they go away. So like that happened in America one time. So these people um, who were Westerners, they were just, you know, driving along and they slowed down by looking at Prabhupada and his disciples. Prabhupada says, good morning, how are you? And these people say, Hare Krishna, like that, you know, in a kind of, um, not sarcasm, but in a kind of respect or in a kind of uh, exchanging some greeting because they have heard about Hare Krishnas. And then they go away. And then one of the disciples asks Prabhupada, Prabhupada, it is said that if one chants Hare Krishna, there will be a lot of pious benefit. So what will happen to these people? So Prabhupada says, they are liberated. And then these disciples are stunned. They are liberated? Prabhupada said, yes. If you chant Hare Krishna without offense, you are liberated. Even one time. Because these people have chanted Hare Krishna as Nama Abhasa. Nama Abhasa means chanting without offense. They were not chanting to take benefit of the pious credit generated from the holy name. They were not chanting to use the holy name for a particular purpose. They were chanting just because they wanted to chant, without any, without expecting anything out of it. So he said they are liberated. And then these people would see that they, these people will go and do their normal work and go back to home and enjoy with their families and then they are liberated. So the point there is, at that moment, all their sinful reactions are completely vanquished. But of course, we keep pouring mud on our body, just like an elephant, when it is completely cleansed of taking bath, he comes out and again puts mud on his body. So we do the same. We might chant very nicely. Of course, our chanting has not come to the stage of offenseless chanting because at that time we can taste the love of God of course it's a glimpse of love of God Nama Abhasa means illumination a reflection of the wonderful illumination of love of God um, so when we become offenseless we can also become liberated but even when we become liberated because of our past conditioning we keep accumulating the dust on our body again we keep engaging in sinful activities, sense gratificatory activities. That's why we require constant cleansing. Constant cleansing. So sorry about that. So we require constant cleansing so that the dust in the mirror of our heart is constantly being erased. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, 
చేతోదర్పణమార్జనం భవ మహాదావాగ్ని నిర్వాపణం వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రైమరీ రీజన్స్ వై వి చాంట్ ఈస్ టు కీప్ అవర్ కాన్స్టెంట్లీ కీప్ అవర్ మిర్రర్ కాన్స్టెంట్లీ క్లెన్స్డ్ సో దాట్ ఈస్ వాట్ అవర్ హోలీ నేమ్ హెల్ప్స్ బోత్ ఇన్ క్లెన్సింగ్ అండ్ ఇన్ అటైనింగ్ లవ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఐ విల్ స్టాప్ హియర్ ఎనీ అదర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ కామెంట్స్ ఆన్ వాట్ వి డిస్కస్